Roosters, uh, many people don't like roosters because they make noise, but roosters have so much more personality than hens in general. Yeah. They are just so much more interactive. <laughs> um, your dream is a rooster flock, right? Yeah, I want a bachelor, bachelor flock. A bachelor flock. Yeah, because so many people get roosters and then they just go and dump them somewhere or they kill them. Like, I just, I just not fair. Well, and this is also... And they're beautiful. Yeah. And this is also the reason why we um, keep our flock up. Um, I, I don't think we will live here for the rest of our lives. Uh, we travel a lot. Nadia is from Australia. She's got a big, big family there. We might in the future move to, uh, to Australia. Um, but we can't really relocate our chickens. Uh, we, the reason being that people are happy to take the, the hens but uh, they'll probably call uh, hey hey and uh, and that's that's a no 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 um, we're not doing that we're not doing that so that's why <coughs> we keep the numbers uh, of our flock because we've we've had a number of deaths right we were already talking about uh, muffins who died and then benji. we had benji now what happened with benji <coughs> that was the hardest one for me yeah. he was my he was my favorite he was my favorite and we were very, very close. Like I'd call his name and he'd come over and he'd pick up things and show them to you. Like we, we had a very close, close relationship. I love Benji. Yeah. So he started uh, to uh, show signs of the Carissa virus. And we, what did we do? We went to that garden shop. We right? went to the garden shop where we bought them and we spoke to the man that sold them to us from the mini farm. Um, as he had already advised us that what we did with muffins, with her surgery, we shouldn't have done that. Apparently, according to him, we should not have done that. We should have consulted with him and we should not have gone to a vet. Being as trusting of him as we were in the, from the beginning, we decided with Benji to go and talk to him. He uh, gave us, hey. he gave us uh, antibiotics in a plastic bag. Uh, hush hush because uh, he was not uh, allowed to to sell it so he gave us that and well we didn't know that he wasn't allowed to sell it i thought he was giving us the antibiotics himself and it was hush hush because we didn't have to pay for it yeah that's what i thought i did not know that he was not allowed to give us antibiotics yeah otherwise i wouldn't have done it anyway yeah we so and he gave us the dosage and we did the dosage Two weeks on this very high dose of antibiotics, the whole flock was on it, and no improvement. In fact, he got worse in those two weeks. He's, he developed he developed a big abscess in his eye, just like muffins did. He stopped eating, he stopped drinking, and he lost a lot of weight. He was still running around every now and again, but he was also sleeping a lot during the day, which is really not normal for him so he deteriorated quite drastically yeah in those two weeks so we spoke to the guy we the went back with benji he asked us so i spoke to the guy again after the two weeks and told him he's not getting better he's gotten worse and he asked us to bring benji to the store for him to have a look at <laughs> for us for him to have a look at got there he did an examination i guess outside in the parking lot all of this should have been a big red flag but honestly we just thought you know this guy sells the chickens he cares about them he knows what he's talking about and he's just trying to help us which is what we really believed in anyway he did the examination he goes yes he's definitely got carissa um here's some more antibiotics but up the dose um for one week now he said he'll be fine. He goes, he'll be fine. He's not going to die. He's not going to die, and he'll be fine. No, don't nothing to worry about. He'll get over it. We were really worried. So, after taking that information in from him and his advice, literally the next day, we were like, "No, he's got to go to a vet. I, it's just whatever we've been doing. It's not working. I don't trust this now, and he's really ill." And it felt like, like within that space of 24 hours, like his, his state sort of deteriorated really fast. Yeah. So literally by that next day, we were like that. 
So we called her that. We went in and she wasn't even sure he was going to make it. She was like, I, I don't think he's going to make it. I'm not promising you anything because he's very, very sick. Um, and then Benji was basically admitted to veterinary hospital for five days in pretty much intensive care. Um, he couldn't breathe. The inside of the roof of his beak was splitting from the pressure of the abscess on his eye. Um, there was pus coming out of the abscess uh, through his eye. It wasn't normal pus that you see in chickens. We took him home after five days. Took him home after five days because Ooh. I was able to do his little injections he had to have and uh, tube feed him. Like I, I learnt from the vet when we were there, so we were able to bring him home. And we had him home for about six days. His... Um, he didn't get better. He didn't get worse, but he didn't get better. He still wasn't eating enough on his own and his eye was still massive. Every second day we had to take him down to the vet uh, for them to clean out um, like an incision they'd made in the abscess to clean out the pus and everything. Like it just, it, it wasn't looking good. It wasn't good. But his, his behaviour was still somewhat normal. Like yeah. he was... Still, like, uh, crowing. Lively. Yeah, crowing every morning. Yeah. He was still wanting to, like, do things. He had a dust bath. Like, we had him in the house this entire time in his own, like, sort of, we bought, like, a big dog kennel and set that up for him inside. And this was in winter, so it was cold. So we had, he had to be inside where it was warm and um, away from the rest of the flock. But he did fine in there. Like, he was... That was your full-time job. Yeah, I was looking after him around the clock, basically. And so we became even closer than before. But, yeah, he would sit on the couch with us and then go to bed. And, yeah, the main thing was that he was not eating on his own enough and his abscess was not getting better. It was actually just getting worse. Because that was really our task, was to make him eat. Yeah, he had to eat by himself. That was, like, the main sign of him getting better was him eating and he just wouldn't I had to sit with him on my lap and have the food there and like show him where the food and you know then he would like have a bit but it wasn't enough anyway we took him home and he was home for six days with no improvement and the absolute last resort was surgery um they couldn't do surgery previously because he's just too weak and that's something they might have considered sooner on just to, to get rid of that abscess to relieve the pressure that was causing strife down his throat. And now we're at a point where that was the only thing we could do um, with before considering putting him down because, you know, you, you don't want an animal to suffer. He was really lively. He wanted to live. We all saw that he really wanted to live. So we could not put him down. It wasn't that simple. It wasn't like, let's just put him down. His comb was red. His he... comb was red. He was very alert. You know, he just wasn't eating. And this abscess was splitting the inside of his beak. So, um, look, the vet, they were always very direct with us from the beginning. Um, there was no false hope whatsoever. Yeah. There was always, you know, the prospect of having to get into your minds we may need to put him down, yeah. but right, like she said, all the they were really good. They were they absolutely were amazing. Yeah. So he went back in for surgery, and uh, yeah, he went for surgery on that in the morning. Yeah, surgery went really well. His comb was red the whole way through, and then when they woke him up, he died, which basically went into shock, and he died, and it was really, really devastating. And it was also extremely upsetting for the to, for the vets, like they had been looking after him for a few weeks. Yeah, and they really, all knew him. They all knew him. He was the only patient that was crawling in the morning. Yeah, right? he's the only rooster there. They'd never yeah. had a rooster like stay overnight there either. So, yeah, they all they all really loved him, and they were all very invested in seeing him bounce back. So everyone, it was very distressing for everyone. Obviously, for us, the most. So at that stage, what do we have? We had Hey Hey, and we had three, four girls. We had Hey Hey, Red, 
um, cashew, mochi, and mango. Yeah, and that was actually quite uh, a nice flock. Um, there was a real good balance. I mean, Perfectly Benji balanced. was great, but <laughs> Benji was not. He was not a team player. Uh, he would stir things up, and actually. The, the 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 how do you call it the synergy in the, the dynamics group, the dynamics were just fantastic when we had one rooster with four girls yeah and all the girls got on like it was it was a very good balance and then then we had <sighs> cashew who i thought was limping a little bit and uh, nadia was not here she was at work i took cashew to the vet and they found that a toenail had broken off so they patched her up and she came back home and uh, I cared for the toenail I disinfected it twice a day for a while but her situation did not improve I had to go at this time back to Holland for five days we had the cameras obviously here we had a neighbor who looks after the chickens but that is limited to uh, making sure that they've got enough feed basically but we uh, saw on the cameras that she was sitting by herself and not moving she was moving poorly before but I had built ramps everywhere inside the coop here in the garden that she could just walk around slowly but she wasn't moving anymore we saw her sitting still and i called the neighbor and i said she needs to go to the vet nadia where were you at that time i was in australia you were in australia you called the vet in france make up an appointment i arranged with the boy who takes care of us that uh, of the chicks that he was picking the chick up and bringing it to the vet and then she stayed there for two days until i got back and we decided with the vet that she was going to stay for another two days because her condition was going a bit up and then the condition was going down and she basically it wasn't it was strange because like she her, her little nail had completely broken and then her mobility got worse even after it was yeah. patched up she suddenly she just she couldn't move like her no. legs didn't work anymore yeah and she was left alone by the group and didn't eat anymore and yeah so it's still anyway uh two days at the vet and her condition worsened and uh, we had to make the executive decision uh, of putting her down and uh, the vet asked do you want an autopsy yeah let's do an autopsy because we were not sure what it was Merrick's disease or was it a broken toenail or did the broken toenail come from a crash landing was it a mobility issue was it uh, what do you call it uh, neurological neurological we had no clue what it was no clue so we did the autopsy but it revealed nothing so yeah and it wasn't it wasn't a light decision to put her down it was the right thing to do was the right she thing was to really do. suffering yeah she was in very poor health and poor condition and she wasn't getting better no. and we all of this happened in the space of two weeks and you know chickens heal very quickly and yeah. she did not heal broken bones heal in like two weeks or so yeah like yeah. it's super fast uh, but anyway so we then, said goodbye to cashew yeah that was cashew she's also here in the garden um so we had three ladies left and hey hey a rooster that went fine for a while and then the girls uh, started laying eggs that was really exciting yeah and then all of a sudden mango wasn't well mango wasn't well we just we just noticed she just she wasn't moving properly she was sleeping a lot during the day and this, ha this was over two days. Yeah. We were like, something's just not right. And, and so on the second day... We went... We were like, straight to the, to the vet. vet. Yeah. Straight to the vet. Because I was like, she looks like she might be egg bound. Because you could see like where her vent is and like her belly. It was just like huge. Like it was really bulging. And so I was like, let's just go straight to the vet. Yeah. And we did. And they extracted an egg. An egg. Um, so she was egg bound. Brought her home. She was still very sleepy, so we kept her inside for the night because we thought, look, 
just give her time to recover because she was still just not not right but the next morning she still was really not right and she was really wet and just breathing hard so we called the vet and took her straight in yeah she did a quick internal examination through her vent and felt immediately she had peritonitis which means that she basically because of the um egg that was trapped in there and was extracted the day before it had caused the lining of the inside of that tract that the eggs come out from had torn and then ripped through straight into her stomach and you could like the doctor said she could feel inside her stomach so there's no coming back from that yeah that was that was just a decision we had to make on the spot and uh, it was made on the spot yeah, that so was a bit we of a shock. Back with another uh, uh, dead bird that we buried in the garden, and at this stage we had hey hey the rooster and two girls. Two girls is not enough, especially when one girl is agba or what is it called? Uh, broody. Broody and and sits twenty four seven in her nesting box. Uh, then hey has only got one girl to play with, so to speak. <laughs> that that is, is just not enough and. We we made the decision. We we do everything for Hey Hey. Yeah, look, there's always been the whole. Should we just 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 look after them until they they all die, basically. Yeah, but if one after the other dies, and eventually you there's one that's left by itself. It's yeah, just that's awful. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work that way. So, no. and rehoming the hens that that's a possibility yeah we thought well at least maybe we can rehome them but Eventually. as we said earlier rehoming a rooster no it's really really difficult so basically we're not doing that to hey hey we're, we're, we're going to keep up the stock the flock yes for hey hey yeah and when hey hey passes then we we'll are see free where we're at, yeah. yeah we'll see where we're at but we're free to rehome them um so we decided we sh we better get some new chickens. Yeah, because otherwise, poor Red, who's the smallest, she's the one, she's his favorite hen, and she gets mounted like five times a day at least, and she's so tiny, and she's all lopsided now, and you know, so <laughs> we need it. He, he needs more more hens. So we got uh, we got two more hens, but Nadia did some research. Research, um, yeah. Like, where where to get the hands from not only that we wanted to go to a different uh, store obviously but also because um i do have a suspicion that all our chickens that have died were genetically not healthy i think there was a lot of inbreeding uh, we had one chicken muffins the first one which was the magali chicken um, of which you can be certain that it's not inbred and that it has had all the vaccinations, but the other three, yeah, they, they could have come from, from anyone and, and they were very alike. I, 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 I believe that, I mean, this, this whole animal selling business is a business, right? It's people are making good money doing this. So I, I personally, we've had so much bad luck with our chickens and we've cared so good for her. I mean, Nadia has over time really become a professional. There's, there's not a chicken uh, vlog online that we haven't seen and a book that Nadia hasn't read. We, and we, no expenses spared. We have the best food, we have balanced food, we have all the medications that we need, mostly on natural basis, but also others. We, we wash them when their vent is dirty from poop. Um, we examine them, uh, they have the best housing there is, uh, they have all the room here to play, 100 square meter of garden with different vegetation, they... They've I, got I, the best, they've just got the, as best as it could be Yeah, and, for and, a chicken, like they're spoiled. <laughs> and then within a time span of, of, of what, six months, we have four deaths. So I, I, I seriously think that there's something genetically wrong with the chickens. So Nadia found another chicken shop and they only sell the Magali brand. Yep. 
and we went there uh, first of all just to have a look and a see and, yeah. and getting to know him get a feel for it does yeah. it feel right do we is he answering the the questions with the right answers um and yeah he did it really did so, yeah that was that was good so we went there and we uh, we picked up uh Billy and Pock Pock, uh, two <laughs> new hands, and they are at the moment settling in. This is the th third day now. They're improving, they're getting better. Uh, yeah, little rat is a bit of a bully. <laughs> she's the smallest. She's like the size of a, a big pigeon. Yeah. And she's really putting them in their place. Yeah, you see it when they step up in, uh, in, in rank. <laughs> so she so used funny. to be uh, on the bottom rank. But uh, now they're eating, they learn, uh, they've learned to use a step feeder. Fast. Fast. They learnt by the end, by that evening, the next yeah. day they were doing it by themselves. Well, Pock Pock is already going to bed on, on time. Yeah, her second night here. Yeah. She went to put herself to bed before the others. Yeah. That was cute. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, this is, this is going to be good. Yeah. That's that's a bit uh, the sad part of the story, but that's also why I wanted to make this vlog. Um, chicken keeping chickens is is just not not necessarily that easy. It's uh, it has cost us a lot of money. Uh, the treatments from Benji with all his hospital stays amounted to around six hundred euros. It's about equal in US dollar. Um, mango that was around 200 uh, euro that was a very short uh, sick bed yeah i don't i didn't find the hospital like veterinary fees to be expensive no i think it's very very reasonably priced yeah but it does get costly yeah so basically uh, we arrive at the end of the video um the only thing that I really would like to tell or say or include is my advice to the prospect chicken owner. And that's purely based on the mistakes I've made, we've made, and the good things we've done, uh, the good experiences. When you start doing your research on what you need for your chickens and how and what, you you you, you get lost uh, by, uh, through the advices. It's just everybody thinks something different. Huh? Um, it's really, really hard. I, I think w what would be good is uh, what I would have done. Basically, I would have made an Excel sheet and I would have uh, every advice that I would come across. I would have made a line and then uh, every time I came through that advice by someone, I would make a mark, I would make a tick. And then in the end, you've got sort of an idea of which advices are given the most by the most people, something like that, uh, be be because it, every situation is different. Um, it depends on the breed of chicken, it depends on where you are, it depends on your lifestyle, uh, what you want to get out of it, what you're willing to put in. Um, it's 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 really hard. Uh, what eventually after what now eight months of keeping chickens works for us might not work for someone else. So, um, maybe you look at uh, someone in your area how they are keeping their chickens, and and you could be inspired by that. For us, it doesn't work because people here keep the chickens for the eggs, and that's it. They don't give the chickens names. For example, uh, fortunately, our neighbors here respect us and respect the way we keep chickens and don't make fun of us which i could completely understand well not to our face at least no no I, no people people do like it people do understand that they uh, yeah although they they don't keep chickens this way themselves um but that that would me be my advice yeah look around but but don't get yourself made crazy by all the professionals and the experts my advice for people that are thinking about um having chickens at home for the first time would be to a few things make sure that you do research into what kind of breed you want to have um make sure you look into like what the type of climates that you have throughout the year and if your chickens are going to be okay in those different climates if it's super cold or if it's super hot um 
also make sure you know if you choose a breed like we did that's a bit more fragile and ornamental chicken it's not as cold hardy or as sturdy and strong as another variety of chicken that you're prepared to um provide the chicken with what it needs for different types of weather and um you know have have a certain amount of money set aside for for veterinary bills that you're prepared to put towards each chicken if there's something wrong if it becomes sick with something that you can't fix at home yourself that's super important and um yeah have fun have fun having chickens we love it yeah it's fantastic. we've absolutely loved it yeah i mean it's been a lot of there's been a lot of hard learning and uh like big learning curves and expenses expenses financially yeah we've absolutely loved it we love our chickens they're our pets the same as someone would have a cat or a dog oh. or a parrot it's exactly the same the chickens are no different to us than any other type of pet um so yeah i definitely encourage people to have chickens it's pretty amazing to be able to go into the coop and get your own fresh eggs and you know exactly what your chickens have been eating what's going into your food that you're you know you're gonna eat and i absolutely love it they're great little animals to have but yeah everyone should be prepared um to know that it's not always as straightforward and easy as some people may make out to be mm. at least in our experience yeah know where you get your chickens from know the history big point big big point cool I think we've had it so far, huh? That's it. Go That's, buy some chickens. Yeah, <laughs> not too many though. Mary's made a list of um, of topics that we we needed to just talk about in this video, and he asked me to add to the list. Uh, and I think all I wrote was a question for you. Really, was why don't we have more chickens? Because uh, why don't we have more chickens? They poop. There comes a smell from it. You poop and you smell. I flush my poop, and I don't poop on the floor. Well, not uh, anymore. Not anymore, at least. Uh, veterinary bills. You get more chickens, you get more veterinary bills. You, my vet bills for you are really high. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, these are the wrong answers. Yeah, no, no, uh, there needs to be a limit. There needs to be a limit, and four girls, one rooster, that's, that's a perfect amount. Three girls would still have worked well with with our rooster our breed but I'm, I'm happy about the four and one and uh let's let's keep it that way uh you're most of the time away I'm so uh, i'm the one looking after them anyway i'm gonna get more chickens anyway we've come to the end of the video uh next time a normal video we just had to do this because we wanted to share this information Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for liking, for subscribing. Thank you very much for the people who are supporting us by buying us a coffee once in a while. Without you, uh, we probably wouldn't have been so far as we are now. See you next time. Bye now. <laughs>